Hi everybody, welcome to Car Stylist, digital tips and techniques for vehicle designers. Today we're going to create a wheel in ZBrush. So we're going to go to our light box and we're going to pull out an object, a template, a wheel starter object that's going to allow us to create a wheel a lot faster. It's pre-made and it includes a rim and a sphere and something that allow us to get started very quickly without doing it over and over again. As with any wheel design, we usually create one spoke first, just like whether you're doing it in ZBrush or any other uh, modeling package or 2D package, you really start with a spoke first, one spoke, and you rotate that spoke uh, around a center point. And so we're going to do that, we're going to use that same method uh, in ZBrush here it's quite fast so all you do is take this digital clay in the center and get your favorite tools out and start playing around with that uh, that that uh, digital clay here I'm going to use my move to and make sure that it's uh, symmetrical across the center line that is the symmetry two is on and just started to create and and hack away and see what we can come up with Again, ZBrush is an ideation kind of uh, package. And this, this is just a base shape to get us started. So we're going to play around using the clip curve brush and keep playing around with it and rotate it, experiment with it, and see how it looks. Keep in mind, though, while you're doing this singular spoke, uh, the nuts uh, and how they will relate to that spoke. Because often if you're doing a five spoke versus six spoke, sometimes it doesn't relate in the right way. So keep that in mind. So it's probably good if you spin that spoke around fairly early so that you can kind of get an idea where the nuts will lay between the spokes and whether or not it'll be enough land for, uh, for those nuts, those boats. So now let's go to a script that I've created and this script simply rotates that spoke around, it duplicates it, it rotates it and without having to do that every time. Now I've created several scripts, one for three spoke, uh, five spoke, six spoke and eight spoke and I'm, I'm planning on making even more but uh, this allows me to do this rather quickly. I just press the button and it'll just rotate that thing around, around a number of times. This particular one, I've got to make sure the subdivisions, however, are uh, deleted. And so now I can press the script. And as you can see, it spins at one spoke five times. You can easily see that here there's enough room for the nuts. But uh, more needs to be done. You can see, again, as you, you're, when you're rotating it, that uh, there's more opportunity for experimentation and design. So I am going to take and use my lathe to or make a radio symmetry uh, and just use that to polish the center and see what I can come up with. And see if I can make it relate to where I think the boats would land when we push those boats in. So let's play around with it. It's probably, as you can see, going to need a little bit more resolution. We're going to have to up the, um, divide it a little bit more, or maybe just do a dynamish to, to get some more resolution. Yeah, so just let's go ahead and dynamish it. And, um, continue to see how this thing looks relative to the spokes, relative, uh, relative to the other spokes, and relative to the nuts that we know are going to be drilled in into the spokes, into the center. And I'll just keep on playing around with this and, and seeing where it takes me. And that's the beauty of ZBrush, is that I can play around and, and, and kind of experiment and discover form rather than necessarily be uh, driven by a sketch that I've already made. In some instances, doing it like that is 
actually advantageous. There's some instances where you need a sketch, you need some plan before you hop into 3D. And then there's other instances where uh, hopping in 3D could help you solidify uh, a concept. I'm flipping between the hard polished brush, the, uh, the, the radio symmetry, I'm switching between move tools, and, and just constantly playing around with that one spoke, making sure that that looks right because, and kind of anticipating what it'll look like when I spin it around. As you can see, the other spokes are not being changed um, right now, but I will see how they look when we'll spin that thing around again five times. So it's a back and forth, it's a back and forth thing. As you can see, I've spent it around and uh, we can see the relationships better. Uh, it looks pretty good. It's, it's starting to get there. But of course the backside has a lot of mass and so I'm going to end up cutting that away. And to do that, uh, in this case I tend to use a slice brush uh, as opposed to the clip curve brush. Because when using the slight, the slice brush, I'm able to cut a clean line without getting um, funnies or flashing, as I would call it, uh, from residue. So what I'll do is just simply slice apart, redynamesh it. When I redynamesh it, it'll fill in the hole that's sliced away, as you can see here. Flip it across the center line, spin it around, and then I'm ready to go. So that, as you can see now from sort of a, the rear that we've gotten a little bit of the mass out. Moving forward, however, I've got another tool that I just suck out all of the mass from the back in the right areas. That is for the brake assembly so that everything fits properly. You know, I'm aiming, this is not just a concept, but we're aiming to have something that is, is keeping an eye on production, keeping an eye, here it is. Here's my um, secondary two that sucks out the nut holes. So what I'll do with this later on is just, I'll position that, put that underneath my current spokes and rim and combine the mesh, setting one to be a subtractive mesh and the other to be the positive. And that will just create the holes and the space needed for for the disc brakes in the back. It's really quite quick. I'm positioning it so that uh, the boats don't go all the way through, you know, and um, that it's an appropriate distance for the brake. It is a concept model, but it's a concept model with an eye for production. And that's what these little iterative wheel designs are for, production. And there you go. Now the bolts are sucked out and uh, space is sucked out from the rear, allowing for the disc brake and such. And we're ready to go. It's, it's starting to look like a real, a real wheel. It's even sucked out the uh, center portion for the... Uh, the borehole. A little bit more work to do, but we're not far away. Uh, using that same technique, uh, that is a slice curve brush, I'm going to slice away this portion and then redynamesh it and uh, get a clean flat that relates to the rim better. So there are I've sliced it away and now I'm going to redynamesh it. And now that fills that in cleanly and we're ready to go. We're ready to spin that in again uh, to duplicate those across the other spokes. Now this wheel, I mean, it leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's certainly a good base for uh, moving forward. It's a, 
It's a good base for other iterations. You can see here I'm moving in the, uh, the, the nuts inside the, the holes and um, the borehole with my little Carstalis insignia. And I'm going to move that into the center there. We're almost good to go. It's almost done, guys. So here, um, about to cut away this additional portion. And that was the, uh, I'm not sure if that, uh, that wasn't the slice curve brush. That was the clip, the clip curve brush. So I don't have to do any Dynamesh there. I'll just rotate that. That's enough um, for the purposes here. And we'll just rotate that around. Now I'm finding the rim and I'm about to move the rim down. So here I am trying, before I merge those two, I'm trying something else to see if I can cut a hole in there. And, and I can. I think um, I ended up not liking this. But this is a way that you would cut a hole. But I ended up not liking it, so... Um, but this is the way you would do something like that. But you can see it's quite easy to experiment um, with the spokes and get some very interesting variation uh, really quickly. Once you get that base, this base wheel, it's very easy to continue on and, and, and within minutes have three or four uh, wheel variations. I'm going to use a mask here to mask off a little piece and, and see what I can do there. We'll use a mask to keep that part separate and I'll then use the move tool to bring uh, the unmasked part forward somewhat. See, I'm bringing that forward to just get a little bit of uh, offset between the mask and unmask. Then now I'll go back with my crease curve brush and throw in a crease so that I can preserve those hard lines and, and get something that's very crisp. This, this is uh, a godsend here, this crease, crease curve, and I'm not sure why I haven't used it um, in the past as much, but um, it's great. You just simply uh, lay down a crease where you want the, the edge to be hard. Then you pull out your um, smooth crease brush and that's actually hidden inside of the extra brushes which are in the, I think the light box. And I get to those by pressing the comma key, going to tools or brushes, going to the smooth brush folder and then picking smooth crease uh, brush. And that brush allows you to, wherever you brush, to tighten that crease line and smooth the surrounding areas. It's just a beauty, as you can see here. Now I'm spinning around to see how it looks. Again, here's another one that I'm not sure I like, but again, showing you how easy it is to uh, experiment. Now that's one, we've got another one, and we had uh, the one that looks like a claw, a claw foot. So that's three already. I'm gonna go ahead and merge all of the poly groups together so we don't have any funnies going on. And then, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna change this back, as I said before. I've got two sitting up there. I've got this one and the other one. And just merge it. Actually, I've already done that, and, I, and I'm afraid that I didn't actually show how I've done it, but I simply just merge, I merged the, um, here, here's just throwing on a shader and see how it looks with a more reflective pattern, a reflective uh, shader on. Throwing some shadows, and here it is, guys. This, this is the tool. This is the tool, I think, for wheels. It's worth investigating. And uh, please come back and show me what you've done with this process. I look forward to seeing it. Okay, guys. Thank you. See you next time.